Hello, I'm Anthony Jenkins. I spent over 30 years working in financial institutions all around the world, and I've always been puzzled by two questions. Firstly, why doesn't financial services work better for customers? And secondly, why hasn't technology created profound transformation in the financial services industry, the sort of transformation we've seen in other areas of our lives? And the conclusion I've reached is that to date, technology hasn't yet reached a point that it's become powerful enough to create that sort of transformation and create those much greater, more powerful customer experiences. But the good news is today, we're at that point and the world of financial services is going to be radically transformed. I think of this as a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, we've got the use cases that we all see in our lives. Take out your phone, look at the apps on your phone, you'll see the use cases, whether that's streaming video, getting your news instantly, interacting with your friends, ordering up a taxi. These use cases sit at the apex of the pyramid, but underneath that, in the middle layer, there's a set of technologies that empower those use cases. Think about artificial intelligence, think about cloud computing, think about uh, distributed ledger technology or blockchain. These technologies are the enablers of the use cases at the top of the pyramid. But at the base of the pyramid is where the real action is. This is where massive computing power lives that's getting ever more powerful and ever cheaper. And also things like networking that allows computers to talk to each other, technologies like APIs that allow software to talk to each other. And at this base level of the pyramid is where the action is, where the power is, where the change is coming from, and that change is coming at an accelerated rate. So what we can expect to see in financial services is that as those technologies continue to increase in power and reducing cost, much more capability will be added at the middle layer, and therefore at the apex of the pyramid, we'll begin to see real transformative use cases. Now, how might that happen in real life? For us in financial services, I think artificial intelligence and distributed ledger are the two most powerful technologies. All financial services is just data. So if we can handle data better and more effectively, we should be able to deliver better experiences for customers and better and more profitable services for banks and financial institutions. And artificial intelligence is a way to do that. Artificial intelligence allows you to make better lending decisions, better fraud decisions, better marketing decisions and to do that in a way which is autonomous. We've always used data and models in financial services, but in the new world with AI, the models can learn themselves and improve themselves and improve themselves in ways which even human beings might not imagine. Distributed ledger technology is another very powerful technology that allows us to imagine different ways of delivering financial services. Of course, the most current manifestation of that technology is cryptocurrencies, but that's just one small use case built on distributed ledger. If you think about how a bank or a financial system works, it works with a series of intermediaries. If I want to make a payment to you, I have to instruct my bank, my bank processes that payment through a central clearing mechanism to your bank and ultimately to you. And at each stage of that intermediation, there's both cost and capital and friction. Theoretically, in a distributed ledger world, we can remove all of that cost and friction and just have data and money move seamlessly between participants. So if we put those two ideas together, artificial intelligence and distributed ledger, we can imagine a system which is very, very different in the future to the one that we have today. Potentially one which is lower risk, lower cost, and that could be a real spur to economic growth. Now, along with all of those things, of course, come a number of challenges. If we think about artificial intelligence, what it allows is much finer decision making. I think about this as making decisions at the level of a unit of one. If we think about credit scoring, for example, typically credit scoring is based on identifying groups of people or universes of people that look the same. 5,000 people, 10,000 people, 50,000 people who sort of look the same 
and who are expected to behave from a credit point of view in the same way. Now, uh, that of course works, but it's not very granular. AI allows us to bring down that universe from 5,000 to 1,000 to 100,000 to ultimately one individual. And what that means, of course, is that some people will have much greater access to credit, but also some people will have less or no access to credit. And of course, if you expand that to insurance, the same is true of things like life insurance, health insurance, and so on. So when we think about how technologies like artificial intelligence can be deployed, we have to think about some of the ethical consequences of that. How do we as a society, for example, deal with that question of people who are excluded from the system? Now, I believe that things that take friction out of the system are positives. So that's not a reason for not proceeding with artificial intelligence. It just means we have to think about some of the unintended consequences. Associated with that, of course, are issues of data and privacy and data security and crucially identity. Because without identity, data isn't much use. It's useful in a macro sense, but in terms of making individual decisions for customers, it's quite limited without being able to pin identity. I believe there's a strong case for developing a digital identity that is curated probably by governments. But again, there are a lot of concerns there around individuals' privacy. So permissioning access to that digital identity has to be controlled. Likewise, being very clear about who owns data and who can use that data is very important. Let me give you an example. I bet in the last 24 hours you've made a contactless payment. You either paid for a taxi or you bought a coffee or some other merchandise like that. Now in making that transaction, whose data is it? Is it my data because I bought the coffee? Is it the shop where I bought the coffee from? Is it the bank that operates for me or the bank that operates for the coffee shop? Is it the Visa or MasterCard networks that process the transactions? Whose data is it? Is it all of our data? Is it my data? Is it nobody's data? So in order to be able to do something with the data, we need to establish both identity and data ownership. And of course, then there are a series of ethical questions about what happens to that data and how those things can be controlled. And this has to be defined both by the legislative and regulatory frameworks, but also by the actors behaving in the right way and behaving ethically. If we turn to distributed ledger technology combined with artificial intelligence, that of course, in my view, leads to a very significant reduction in the number of jobs within financial services. People say, of course, that technology has always destroyed jobs and created jobs, and that's true. But this time around, I think, there's a real danger that we could be facing significant net job reduction across the industry as more and more processes are automated. And again, we need to think about how to deal with that in an ethical and fair way. For me, the best solution to that is to make sure that we are continuously skilling and training all of our colleagues in the industry so that they can be economically successful and competitive in this new and exciting world. In conclusion, there's never been a time when I've been more excited about the opportunities for financial services to deliver better products and services for customers in a more profitable and safer way, in a way that's really beneficial for society and our citizens. This new world is being powered by technology. Of course, there are many ethical challenges that we have to address, but I'm confident that if we identify them now and begin to work on them, we can do so and we can make the financial system work in a fundamentally different and better way for all of its users.